Hello and welcome back to Guillotine Chemistry. This is the sixth video in my series about scientific literacy. Uh, again, I like all these videos, they're a little rough around the edges. Give me some feedback so if I ever decide to update these and make them look a little prettier, I'll know what you like and what you don't like. In this video, we're going to break the scientific method down into its three main steps that you'll pretty much find no matter who talks about it. And then we'll just briefly go over what experiments can and cannot do. So again, no matter who you are, no matter how many steps you learn the scientific method in, I, I think you can probably lean it down to three steps. And so I've gone with the three P's here, trademark. <laughs> and so the idea is step one, you are going to ponder. And that means you are going to ask a question about the natural world. It's important that these questions involve data that can be collected from the natural world, since science cannot evaluate what science cannot test. And so, again, anything can be a question about the natural world. For example, is there lead in my drinking water? That could be a good question. Why does lead affect brain development? That would be another good question. The second step of the scientific method is that you are going to propose a hypothesis. Again, you're going to come up with a testable answer. This is a tentative statement that can be tested through either empirical observation or experimentation. So if you can't experiment, you can always just look for the observations. A good scientific idea should be able to be refuted through the data that you collect. This is a key scientific principle known as falsification. And again, if we if we go deeper down the rabbit hole, might talk a little bit more about falsification later. And so again, based on your question, you can come up with a testable answer. So if our question is, is there any light in my drinking water? Your testable answer could be yes. Yes, I think there is. Um, or if your question was, why does lead affect brain development? Uh, you could have a testable answer that it interferes with the growth of synapses. But once you've pondered the question, once you've proposed a testable answer, then you actually will predict the future observations based on your idea. So ponder, propose, predict. Prediction, I think, is the most important part. An imaginative scientist should be able to come up with many, many, many things that a hypothesis could predict. A good hypothesis should be a launch point for dozens of different predictions. These could be sought through, again, future observation or through experimentation. So again, if you think that there's lead in your drinking water, then you could predict that you should be able to precipitate the lead out through a chemical reaction. Or if you think that lead interferes with synapse formation, then you might predict that you would find less synapses in children with lead exposure. And so it would be nice maybe to talk just a moment about experiments in this video. And an experiment is an investigation into the cause and effect relationship between variables. And most of you have talked about these things before. You, have, you manipulate the independent variable and then you examine the dependent variable. So experiments can either reject a hypothesis or fail to reject it. But remember that experiments don't really prove things to be correct. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit more about the hypothesis Again, this is one of those things that over the years, I, I was taught a certain definition that I parroted for a long time, but then when you start looking at it, you realize the answer is probably a little bit more complex than you originally thought. So stay tuned for the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching and have a great day.